Hello everyone, our today's video will be about a stun gun. Disclaimer Let's start by checking the myth. There is an opinion that dogs are afraid of stun gun discharges. Now our puppy alibi will help to find out. I wonder if he is one of those dogs that run away from a discharge sound or not. As it's turned out, Alibi is too fearless for this. He reacts to this strange crackling stick with interest and curiosity and isn't afraid at all. And then he decides to taste the stun gun. The stun gun emits an unusually loud and sharp sound while discharging. By the way, how loud is it? It's time to find out, it's not in vain there is a sound level meter here. The readings are 114 decibels. And it's quite loud. For example, calm human speech has a volume of only 80 decibels. Having mentally prepared for the fact that it's necessary to be deaf all day, we finally move on to the objects. Let's take a chicken egg. We put it on the lid and bring the stun gun to it. As it turns out, the spark goes right into the egg. At the same time, it experiences such a powerful discharge that even the shell flies in all directions. The protein is twitching from electrical impulses. It's quite a good way to peel eggs. but the inner thin shell is still intact. Although there are drops of the egg contents in the places of impact. And what about a smaller egg, for example, a quail one? And there is a similar effect to the chicken one. The shell, coming into contact with a spark, turns into shavings and flies in all directions. Nevertheless, the egg remains inside the shell. The next is popcorn. What happens if one corn is electrocuted? We open a package of ordinary microwave popcorn and take out a corn grain from there. Place bets, gentlemen. How do you think we can get the popcorn from the corn? As it turns out, a corn grain reacts to the stun gun shots. Almost in no way. No matter how much we've tried to pass the spark through the grain, nothing happens. This is because its shell is a very good dielectric. As you can see, the lightning has always avoided the corn. There is no single visible trace left on the grain. For the same reasons, we failed to pass a spark through other objects. They are a match, a wick from a firecracker, dot and even a lighter. None of the above conducts electricity. And the discharge jumps unusually fast, for a fraction of a second. This time for lightning to appear is not enough to ignite any of the solid combustibles. We've even tried a sparkler, which has a metal rod inside that conducts electricity. But again, the stun gun acts the same way as it does on eggs, simply damaging the outer coating. As we know, it takes only one spark to ignite a combustible gas. Maybe you've already guessed what is going on. We need a propane tank for the next experiment. We pump it into the ball, filling it up with the gas to the limit. We bring the sparking device to the surface of the ball. And nothing. The stun gun simply cannot pierce the rubber sheath with sparks. We have to change the tactic a little and hit the propane balloon with acceleration. On the first attempt, the ball bounces from the stun gun and flies away somewhere. But after a few hits, we managed to break it through. The result has exceeded all our expectations. The ball sheath flies away, and a huge fireball appears where it's been before. By the way, pay attention to the slow-mo. How many times it takes the stun gun to release sparks after the balloon has burst to ignite the gas? The main thing is that the tactic works and everything turn out epic, just like we love on live today. Now let's get back to the conductors. A Pepsi tin can conducts electricity. I wonder if it is possible to break through it if you hit the tin with a stun gun of lightning. 
We bring the device to the wall of the can and begin to discharge it. We have to make a lot of blows, and we almost go deaf from the crack, but the can does not break through. Although some white dots have appeared in the places where there are sparks. This electrical discharge has burnt the paint in some places. Of course, it's not the result we've expected, but this is not bad either. By the way, you can see so clearly what a small point the sparks of a stun gun strike. And now we are getting to the point. What can happen if we hit another metal object with the stun gun? Especially if it is also filled with gunpowder. As it's already clear, we are talking about cartridges. Today we have two participants in the experiment 5.45 caliber and Flaubert's cartridge. We will keep going, so let's start with Flaubert's cartridge. But no matter how much we hit the cartridge walls everything is completely in vain. However, there is another idea of how to make it work. Such a bullet is set in motion from the capsule. So, we need to try to pass an electric current through the same capsule. We place the Flaubert cartridge so that we have access to the capsule and begin to discharge. Hmm, strange, and this time we have nothing. So, it's time to move on to the 5.45 caliber cartridge. This is everything that should work. Unlike Flaubert's cartridge, it has gunpowder inside. As you know, gunpowder can ignite from heat. Here we will need more serious means of protection. Of course, safety is paramount, so we should wear a protective helmet, you never know what can happen. And, of course, we have to hide in a trench under the table. It is relatively safe to shock the cartridge from this zone. We discharge and then again. But the situation is just like with Flaubert's cartridge, nothing happens. There is discharge after discharge, and the bullet never fires. It's quite safe to hit a cartridge with a stun gun, but you definitely shouldn't repeat this. Bye bye.